What are you all doing here? Did you come here to get something or to give something? What am I doing here? I didn't know I was going to do this till two days ago. <laughs> but did I come here to get something or give something? These vultures at the carcass, did they gather to get something or give something? This fox, he's, he's uh, doing his thing in the meadow. Is he giving something or getting something? And the grass, is the grass receiving a service or giving a service? These lions hunted this wildebeest. Are they taking something or are they giving something? Are they benefiting the herd or are they depleting the herd? And the yeast in your beer, is the yeast having fun, is the yeast playing, or is the yeast working? The yeast it just likes to eat things that are sweet, you know, like carbohydrates and sugar, and then it pees. And we drink their pee. And, and <laughs> Do we ever think about where anything comes from? Like, the good, a lot of the goods that we use in America come from sweatshops. Do we ever think about that? Do we think about where things come from? And this is the nature of money. Money causes us to be separated from products. It, it separates the consumer and the product. So we don't think about where things come from. And this is my thing. Um, in 2000, I gave up money for 15 years until three years ago I began taking care of my aging parents. My dad passed away a couple of years ago and now I'm with my mom and I'm proud to say she's here. She's, she's 90 years old. And something, and I've had to think about these things a lot, like what is giving and what is taking. Like when you don't have money and possessions, and you, especially when you're on the road, you're very much in the receiving position. And I'm very dependent on other people's generosity. And that's the whole point of this. And it also puts me face to face with things that I'm dependent upon and people that I'm dependent on. And sometimes people would pick me up hitchhiking and they would thank me afterwards as if I were doing them a favor. Is the hand selfish or selfless? When your right hand pulls a thorn from your left foot, does the hand expect credit? Does the foot feel debt? What if we saw the whole universe as one single body? The universe, unus versus, comes from unus versus, which means one turning, one winding, one current. There's one and no other. And is there anything that can exist apart from anything else? Then there's the law of physics. To every action, there is always opposed and equal reaction, or the mutual actions of two bodies upon each other are always equal and directed to contrary parts. So that means you reap what you sow instantaneously. Do we ever think about this? Is this really true? Perfect justice is the law of physics. Everything is instantaneously paid for. And this is something that we've lost touch with. And I feel like it's money thinking that has gotten us out of this, what we once knew. But look at, look at these wild animals, like the ones I just showed you, like this monkey. What tastes good is good. Does a monkey or does any wild animal have to read a label to find out if it's healthy or not? Why is this? And why is it that you look at any wild animal population on Earth, not domestic animals, I'm talking about wild ones, 
take any random sample, how many obese and how many malnourished, how many chronically ill or mentally ill do you find in a random sample? Then take any random sample of any monetary country on Earth, ask yourself the same thing, and then ask yourself, we, we believe that we're so advanced medically and that we're, we're advancing, but why is it that what tastes good is often bad? Why is it that we overeat? Why doesn't a wild animal overeat? How do they know how to eat and take care of themselves? Why do we not know how to take care of ourselves? So I was just talking about how payment is instantaneously, but in instantaneous, but there's also a pay-it-forward system in nature. This is how nature runs, wild nature, that is. Like a deer will eat leaves from a tree and has no conception of payback to that tree. It's a pay-it-forward system. So the de deer eats leaves and then poops them out. The organisms in the soil, like the mushrooms, eat these eat the deer's poop. And the deer doesn't say, look at all the good I'm doing. I deserve credit. Look how I'm creating balance. It's a pay it forward system. But every step of the way, see the deer is just doing what he likes to do. So are the mushrooms and the trees. If, if something doesn't taste good, they're not going to do it. So every step of the way, we're getting instantaneously paid. And we somehow think that we are above the laws of physics. So we, we don't realize that human interaction, social interaction, is also under the law of physics. So everything that I do, I'm going to get paid back instantaneously. Not delayed, instantaneously. If, and this applies to both positive and negative. If I do something harmful, if I think something harmful, immediately I understand that it's harmful. Whether it's good or bad, I know it inside. This is called conscience. Conscience is instantaneous payment, but we're so unaware of ourselves and our own conscience that we, we've lost touch with this basic law of physics. And we think linearly as a result. As I was showing you, nature runs cyclically in a pay-it-forward system, but we have not a pay-it-forward system, but we work for our own credit. We work for our own rewards. And this is what every major religion in the world talks about, is give up the credit for your own work. Pay it forward. Work for the sake of doing rather than for your own credit. But our whole civilization, monetary civiliz civilization, is based upon working for our own credit. And we think of it, it's, it's linear. We don't recognize that every single step of the way we're getting paid. We're missing out on the blessings every step of the way because our focus is up here. And our payment is artificial. Our payment is not down, it's not in reality, but it's in symbols. This is our incentive. Our incentives are outside of ourselves. They're extrinsic rather than intrinsic. We're not self-motivated. We're made, motivated from without. So this is my big pet peeve. This is my big uh, soapbox. The fall from grace thinking about these things over the years, I'm realizing more and more, I'm, I'm very certain that all these things came in one package, or fall from grace. Grace means gratis, it comes from the same root, gratis, which means free, and gratitude. When we believe we're working for things and we deserve them and we're entitled, we work for our own credit, we lose our sense of gratitude grace, gratis. If it's not free, then we don't feel gratitude for it. 
So money, agriculture, domestication, linear religion, and linear science, I feel like they all came in one package. I just want to show some stark contrast, just to let it sink in. Here's wild, wild grasses. Here's domestic. Wild grasses know how to take care of themselves on their own, cyclical. They're perennial. This is not perennial. You have one, one sowing and one reaping, and the whole thing has to be coaxed along, along by another species, a, a higher authority. These grasses have their own authority. They have the right to adulthood. They have the right to even reproduce on their own. Their reproduction isn't controlled. I've got a wild hog here, wild hogs, domestic. Do I need to say anything? Just look at them. This is our advancement in civilization. Can these hogs live by themselves out in wild nature? Are they adults? And this is, this is something we don't think about with domestication. Studies have been done on animals that become de domesticated, like some foxes in Russia. People decided to domesticate some foxes and see what happens, not interbreeding them with anything else. And as they became more and more compliant, domesticated, their tails started curling, their ears started flopping, and they started getting spots. And you'll notice that's a characteristic of most domestic animals of whatever species. And that is also the characteristic of babies. The idea is to train species to become compliant and never have the right to grow up. Do we ever think about that? That Why is it that we can't have a day go by where we can't ask permission to some authority whether we can act or not? How many of us can live out in the wild on our own? How many of us really are adults? There's Wild sheep, domestic. And these are shorn also. Shearing of sheep is a... And shearing of dogs. Shearing is another way of gaining authority over another creature. Wild, domestic. Wild, domestic. These are the same people. Wild, domestic. Adult, compliant. Wild, domestic. So I've been talking about cyclical versus linear. Linear is business. You earn your own pay. You reap what you sow. Domestic, owned, authority without, not self-sustaining, not perennial. Here we go, linear. We can't see in a cycle. We can't see that everything returns. There's one time sowing and one time reaping. And this is why I'm saying that I feel like the idea of money and investment comes from the same, it came in the same package as agriculture because all of a sudden we've gained control over another species and we work for our own credit. So this is where we're at, right here. I've got the blue. This is the way we see payment as going one direction. Dominant possessive provider. But we don't see that it's the repayment is coming the other direction. We're, we're unaware of that. And I would call that domesticated recessive receiver. But this is the reality, they're both one. Every step of the way, you're getting repayment coming the other direction in the cycle. They're going both directions. But this is how we see it in our world view. We just see one, one line, sowing and reaping and incentives for the future, which are artificial, not coming from within.
And then there's our, our, our world view. Mircea Iliad, he was a famous mythologist. He wrote the myth of the eternal return and a lot of other essays. He pointed out that in primi so-called primitive cultures, like native cultures, there's not an idea of there's not an idea of history. Like each year's rituals are on an eternal return to the mythic age. It's a constant returning to the beginning. But linear religion, and I'm not knocking religion. I I would like to. I would like us to think about our own religious traditions and how underneath they're cyclical, but we've made them into linear. Linear religion, linear philosophy, one beginning, one end, separated. One creation, one destruction, separated. Employment and reward, separated. Work and play, separated. One sowing, one reaping, separated. Motivating force outside of ourselves, separate, far away. Intrinsic, extrinsic authority, separated. Divine and natural, separated. Heaven and earth, separated. And this is what I grew up with. It was on our wall growing up. It was in, it's a, called a dispensational chart, and it was invented by John Darby. And he divided history up into one single beginning and one single end, one Genesis, one Apocalypse, and it comes out seven dispensations or ages. And in, the begin in this part right here is called the Church Age, and it's seven within seven. There's seven candlesticks. See, seven. But one thing I noticed, this is from the book of Revelation in the Bible. One thing I noticed is they overlooked that this is modeled after the Jewish menorah, which shows that it's not linear, it's cyclical. Everything comes out of a center candlestick. But just imagine this being under the ground, buried, and we can only see linear. This is how we see time. But what if creation is happening continually? What if, what if in our own tradition, create everything that's happening is happening right now? continually, perpetually? What if work, the six days of work, are one with the central day of rest, which is the beginning and the end? This is, that's a whole other talk. I, would, I could talk on that for hours. But basically, I'm not blaming us for having this linear worldview. There was a time when we saw the horizon as a flat flat earth. And as our consciousness expands, our linear worldview turns into cyclical. Our horizon expands. Creation is work. Recreation is recreation. Recreation is recreation. Is there a difference between work and play? Like for the yeast in the beer. Or the vultures on the carcass. No body part can truly take credit, price, praise for anything because no body part exists apart from the whole. What if we see everything as the whole? What if we redefine our idea of God to mean the whole? Our words credit, price, and praise all refer to money lingo. All credit to the whole. All price to the whole, all praise to the whole. Price and, price and praise come, praise come from the same root. Whole equals health equals holistic equals holy. Holy is from the same root as whole. Hallelujah. And I would like to, I feel intense gratitude toward all of you as my own body parts. So thank you.